Hi, and welcome once again to Reflections, a 15-minute broadcast that's designed to encourage you and uplift you and strengthen you and help you to find good, firm grounding in the Word of God and in your life as a child of God. Of course, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, here's an excellent opportunity for you to make things right. Uh, give your life to the Lord and serve Him, live for Him, Every day of your life, you'll never regret the decision to serve the Lord. And so it is always our desire with every broadcast, whether it be this or online church with Pastor D on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock on Facebook Live. We want to see you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are serving the Lord, we want to see you max that out, be the best child of God that you can be. So we want to share with you today another one of the attributes of God. Um, I've been sharing with you a series uh, on the attributes of God, not every week, but as the Lord gives me the release to so do, that is what I share with you. And today we want to go into another one of those attributes, talking about God being omnipotent. All the information you need to get in touch with me will come up on your screen if it hasn't done so as yet. But also at the end of this video, my editor puts in a, a, an end screen that will have all of the contact information right there for you. So if you miss it during the early part of the broadcast, you can log on at the end and you will see there uh, what they call a card come up at the end with all the contact information there. So we want to talk today about the omnipotence of God. Uh, in the past, I've shared with you uh, different aspects of the character of God. And uh, I'm just putting a, something up to block my view here. Um, I share with you different aspects of the character of God and as we explore the attributes of God we're asking the question who is God, what is God like, what are his characteristics and so this is just another step in that there are several more steps to go and uh, truly we cannot search out the, the vastness of the God that we serve but today we are going to look at another aspect of who he is. So we want to find out who God is, what he's like. So if you, again, are thinking about serving him, you have an idea of the God that you are getting into a relationship with. We have shared uh, in the past about God being immutable. In fact, that he never changes. That he is faithful, excellent quality. All of the qualities are excellent. He is love. God is love. Not just a God of love. He is love. And all love comes from God. He's also omniscient, means that he knows everything. And then the last one we shared with you several weeks ago is that God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere, wherever you are geographically, but wherever you are in your experience, in your circumstances of life, God is present there. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows what you're going through, and he is there to minister to you. Now, today we move on to Another aspect of God's character, uh, that he is omnipotent, 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 all-powerful. That's what it means in its etymology. God is all-powerful. And I want to begin by reading two verses of scripture to you. Um, Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verse 20, and I'm going to read it to you from the King James Bible and then from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, No one to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. In one of my earlier messages, I talked about that power working in us. I think I was talking about Resurrection Monday. Yeah, that was a message I was sharing on Online Church with Pastor D. But now, what I'm talking about is the fact that God is all-powerful. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. But let me bring it to you from the amplified Bible because it, it, it literally amplifies it, it expands it, and helps us to understand what the scripture is really saying. It says here, now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power or by the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do, I love this word, super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. 
Wow, that is that is more than a mouthful right there. But then we're talking about the fact that God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. So when you consider that, you think about that, the reality is if you were or any of us were to allow our minds to go as far as our minds will take us, as far as we are able to imagine in terms of power and the power of God, he is infinitely more powerful than that. Uh, beyond our highest prayers, our highest desires, our highest thoughts, our hopes, our dreams. So if you dream about the, the power of God, how great God is and what he could do, the fact of the matter is our finite minds cannot truly comprehend an infinite being. We cannot truly understand his the limit of of his power simply because it has no limit. He is all powerful. And when you consider this, you begin to realize that God, though he has all power, it means that he can do anything that he wants, anything that he desires, he can do it. And that's why I love to talk about the sovereignty of God. And I've talked about this on more than one occasion, and I will probably talk about it on other occasions. God is sovereign. He is absolute or supreme ruler he is he, he is in possession of supreme or ultimate power there is no power greater than his there is no power greater than he is he is sovereign so he can do anything that he wants however we have to keep this balance and that's why i mentioned to you pretty much in all of the other attributes that i shared that you cannot look at an attribute of god in isolation you have to balance them or put them together with the all of the other attributes because if if you have a, a supreme ruler uh, who does not have any boundaries then that ruler becomes a despot uh, that is not the case with our God because he is bound by his character he cannot do anything that contradicts or is contrary to who he is in terms of this other characteristics so god is just god is love god is faithful god is merciful so he cannot do or be anything outside of these characteristics that define him so he has all power but that power can only be exercised in the context of who he is that gives me great comfort because i may i know that i'm not serving a madman I'm not serving somebody who is a, a power-hungry individual, but God has all power, yet he operates within the parameters of his character. We know that God's character ultimately is good. It is pure. It is beyond reproach. And therefore, we have the, the comfort and the confidence of knowing that we can rest absolutely in a, an all-powerful God who will never defy who he is on the other aspects of his character or characteristics so god's attribute of omnipotence means that he's able to do all that he desires to do i've talked about this before as well but some things are worth repeating he is all powerful or we might say almighty he is called the Almighty in the Word of God. But let's put an extra L in there. He is Almighty. Not Almighty, but yes, He is Almighty. But He's Almighty. He can do uh, way above and beyond anything that we could ever imagine. But because of this, when God says something, when God says something is going to happen, unless He changes His mind for some reason, if God says it, it is going to happen regardless. When God plans something, it will come to pass. When he purposes something, there is nothing on earth or in the, the spiritual realm that can stop it from coming to pass because his power is greater than any opposing force that will come against him. So when God sets a plan in motion on the face of the earth, I mean the devil can huff and puff like the big bad wolf, but he will never ever be able to destroy the plans of God. I know, as I've been sharing from the, the book of Job on God's end game, that sometimes we see what the devil is doing, and the devil is 
quite a powerful being. But he is a created being like the other angels. So even though he has power, his power is limited. God's power is unlimited. So I want you to, to appreciate and understand this. When God speaks over your life, if God plans something for your life, you can be assured that that thing will come to pass. There is one person who has the power to stop what God wants to do in your life from taking place. You know who that person is? That's right, you or me. I, because of the choices that I make, because of the decisions that I make, I can hinder God's work in my own life. Nobody else can do that. God will do what he has to do and nobody can stop it. But like, for example, when he talks about uh, none can pluck us from his hand, that's true. When God has you, he has you. But we can choose to walk away. We can choose to go the opposite direction. We have the power because we are always agents of free will. He created us with the power to choose, the power to make decisions for ourselves. So you make a decision to live for the Lord, he will take you in his hand. And he promises that he will hold you there. He will never let you go. No one else can ever take you out of God's hands. But he always leaves us with the ability or the power to choose. So we can choose to walk away from God. We can choose to leave his hand. We can choose to leave the security that he provides for us in the, the hollow of his hand. That is our choice. That's our decision. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if God says X is X, nobody can change that. If he says you're going to go this place, nobody can stop that. If he says that you're going to go that place, nobody can change that because it is a sovereign God who is all-powerful, who has decreed that this thing will be, and it will be. When God challenged the devil regarding Job, God already knew that Job would pass the test. God already knew that Job would come, come through with flying colors. And exactly as God knew, it took place, you see. And the devil threw everything in the kitchen sink at Job. But yet Job was able, because God knew the character and the, the stand of this man, that he was able to uh, overcome anything that the devil threw at him. Uh, and that's just one man and one situation. I want you to understand that on a global scale, you read again into the book of Revelation. We talked a lot about that, and we're coming with a series on that in the not-too-distant future. But you see what God has planned and what is going to take place in the, in, as predicted, as prophesied, in the book of Revelation, nobody can stop it. All of the, the, the big wigs on the earth today are making their plans. They're trying to deceive the world. They are deceiving the world. They're doing things to, to introduce the Antichrist and the one world system and the one world currency and all kinds of stuff. They're doing that. And it is prophesied in the Bible that these things will come to pass. But at the end of the day, it is God's plans that will prevail. Nobody can stop the plans of God from coming to pass. So again, the enemy can do whatever he wants. At the end of the day, we see a triumphant church. We see a glorious church. He said he's coming back. Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or blemish. This thing that we call the church, I mean, is going through a lot of things right now that are not good that are negative. The enemy has infiltrated the church. But let me tell you something. What God ordains is going to come to pass. Why? Because he is all powerful. He is well able, even if we divert, even if we move away from his calling and plan, he is well able to bring us back onto the right track. Even if you walk away from God, he has promised that he will woo you. He will draw you. He'll call you back to himself. Again, you have free moral choice. You can say yes to God or you can say no to God. But at the end of the day, if God says it, it is going to come to pass. So you read the word of God, you see the prophecies there. They will come through exactly as they are written in the word of God. He is above every power, every potentate, 
any kind of ruler on this earth. God is above that. So man can make all of his plans or her plans. Man can make any plan he wants. But at the end of the day, it is God's plans that will supersede. I want to share with you next week some things uh, from the Word of God that illustrate. And I, I had a serious problem trying to figure out how do I illustrate all power. So I'll give you different areas where God demonstrates his power so that we kind of get an idea, even though we won't fully understand it, that we serve an omnipotent and all-powerful God who is supreme ruler and has supreme uh, ultimate power to do whatever he needs to do subject to his character. So God bless you. Put your trust in God. Serve him. Wait on him and God will do everything that is promised in your life and through your life that he may receive all the glory and all the honor. God bless you. We will see you next week as we talk again about the omnipotence of the God that we serve.